Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A Bradford boy made good. Andy Haldane, chief economist of the Bank of England, caused waves on the foreign exchanges yesterday after he disagreed with the bank's governor, suggesting that interest rates should go up. He hailed what he called the city's real sense of opportunity and optimism. Andy Haldane spoke exclusively to our economics correspondent, Heli Ebrahimi. Uh, Andy Haldane is 200 miles from the Bank of England um, and a million miles from the stuffy spreadsheets of Threadneedle Street. Uh, Bradford is where he grew up. Yeah. So now Britain's number one economist is back to see what people make of our financial right. health. So how do we know if our economy was doing well? So what Zaki said was that if the economy was not doing especially well, one thing you could do would be to what, Zaki? Lower the interest rate. Ironic how then Zaki? that Haldane exactly. used the same day to announce he would be cheaper. voting to hike rates later this year. More. The era of cheap money could soon be over. Oh, what will you use that borrowing for? Is it a spend on stuff? What sort of stuff, Zaki? Houses. houses, yeah, why not houses? A Bradford boy done good, perhaps more Willy Wonka in style than Montague Norman. Well, if you take the crisis, if you take globalisation, you take technology, and you mix them all together in a cocktail, yeah. that is going to cause people to think twice. And it is. It was there today, right? Haldane's view of the world has been shaped by what it was like around here in the downturn of the 1980s. The first in his family to go to university, he had the rather odd notion that economics could help him rescue people from the ravages of recession. Now, ten years on from resuscitating the British economy, Haldane is having to come to terms with the limits of what he can do. I think the global financial crisis ushered in a fairly lengthy period of people feeling quite uncertain about their job, about their income, about their business. But that was 10 years ago. We thought we would have recovered by now. These things take time. Those psychological scars take time to heal. Put on top of that the sequence of awful humanitarian tragedies of the past few weeks. And of course, that is a, those in combination will have to some degree sap the spirits of people in the wider economy. We at the bank need to be very conscious of those shifts in mood, those shifts in morale. There seems to be this new British reality and it's one of a divided nation. You don't need a fan chart to tell you people in Britain are angry. Sometimes you want to hear it firsthand. Contrary to popular belief, we don't sit down there with our complex models pressing buttons and taking the answer that drops out the bottom. That is not the way we set policy. We need, at the very least, to be conscious of what impact our policies are having and whether it's possible, possible that our policies might sometimes be making those problems more or less acute. All of this would be, could be retail space, could it? In the tunnels of an 18th century prison, now home to shops and bars, Haldane tries to navigate the two realities of Britain's economy under pressure from Brexit while households face climbing inflation. The consumer has retrenched somewhat as prices in the shops have picked up. They have cut back on some of those... Because they feel poorer, don't they? There's a squeeze on households. Whether they feel poorer, they are poorer. Their incomes now once you adjust for higher prices in the shops, are probably falling and they have retrenched. To tame inflation, the answer is raising interest rates, but that will hurt borrowers. We're duty bound, rightly so, to explain how our actions and everyone else's might be affecting different cohorts of society, different regions of the country, different sectors of the economy, the young versus the old, the house owner versus the renter, and that we have been doing. And the truth is, Britain's inequalities seem to be on the rise. Left-leaning think tank Resolution Foundation has warned we're set to see the biggest jump in inequality since the 1980s. Meanwhile, house-owning pensioners have seen a £2.3 trillion surge in their wealth 
compared to young people who have increasingly been locked out of the housing market. Our tools are limited and blunt in their impact. Interest rates, I'd love it to be the case, Helia, that I could wave a magic interest rate wand and solve, for example, the UK's productivity problem. It is not going to happen. That is not the way the world works. So what will work with Brexit? Are we talking about an off-ramp or an off-cliff? You know, we're all looking and hoping for a, an off-ramp. Jean-Claude Juncker is saying it's not going to be cake for the British people, it's just going to be salt and vinegar. What flavour of Brexit are you expecting? <laughs> uh, I think I'll um, defer uh, assigning Brexit any flavour. Brexit has not yet been served and for Haldane it may not even be the biggest problem on the menu for Britain's economy. Helia Ebrahimi reporting now.